Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another Ricket project. So in our Leading Up to Bridgerton Season 3, Part 2, Week of Fun, I have a different kind of project for you today. Bridgerton Cricket shirts. I know we've done two tablescapes, one for the Bridgerton family, one for the Featherington family. And I dressed up a little fancier for those, not quite as fancy as I would like, but fancier. Today we're dressing down with t-shirts. I have made seven, eight designs uh, in Cricut Design Space. I will link those below. You can go look through them, uh, make your own shirt, share it with me, I want to see. Um, but of all of the eight designs, I had to make two for myself. This one, you must make haste and Colin's carriage ride, take the long way with a sweet little carriage. And this one I did with infusible ink. So it has a little yellow pattern carriage for Penelope. And then my best friend, um, she heard I was making shirts. So she asked me to make her this one. She says, I have no intention of causing a scandal. It's very appropriate for her. So. We're going to go ahead and open Cricut Design Space. I will show you all the designs, show you how to make them. We are actually going to be using iron on for two of the shirts, my uh, blue one here and my, my bestie's pink one, which I will not show you this one on camera since it is identical to mine. A little odd because I'm normally the pink girl and she's the blue girl. So we're switching personalities for the day. Um, and then I did want to use that pretty yellow floral print. So this is infusible ink on an infusible ink shirt, which is why it's white and not a color. I would have preferred to do like a light peach or a light yellow, but I still really like the colors. So let's go ahead and get into it. We will cut the infusible ink and the iron on, and then we will press them onto our shirts. And we'll give you a close up at the end of all three designs into Cricut Design Space, I have uploaded all of my Cricut designs for my little Bridgerton shirts. I'm very excited. Uh, you can see there are one, two, three, four uh, quotes over here on the left. You must make haste. I have no intention of causing a scandal. This is my Bridgerton watching shirt and who needs fresh air when there is fresh gossip or season three, along with Colin's carriage ride take the long way. I have seen a couple shirts with this on it and I thought it was so cute. So I made up my own little version. Uh, the carriage here, the bumblebee and the silhouettes are all images that I pulled from the design library here in Cricut Access. So these are not my files. You can go in and grab them, make your own shirt, do whatever you like with them, make a banner. Um, I have simply added them to my canvas for this specific project, but I am not, you know, I don't own them. They are in the Cricut Access Library. They are available to everyone, which is fabulous. Um, then, as you can see, you can take any of these icons and you can combine them with kind of the quotes. So the only one that doesn't really add is Colin's carriage ride, take the long way, although you could take this carriage, I suppose, and add it to any of the quotes. Um, so I decided I really liked that you must make haste that Eloise says in the very first season with Daphne. And then, of course, they are always saying make haste, which is Bridgerton for hurry up. It's Regency speak. Um, so I've added the little Bridgerton B to this one. And I'm going to be making this shirt for sure. I also made this is my Bridgerton watching shirt and I added the little Regency couple. These are just silhouettes. There's actually quite a few silhouette uh, people in the Access Library. If you aren't in love with these, you can go find a different set. Um, so you can add any of these icons with any of the quotes to make any like, you know, mix and match combination. But I am going to be making... I oh, know I turned off my B. There. I'm going to be making You Must Make Haste and Colin's Carriage Ride. I think I'm also going to be making, um, I wasn't trying to make a scandal. I don't remember that exact quote. 
I have no intention of causing a scandal, but we'll see. I told my best friend I'd make her a shirt as well, and she's still trying to decide between I have no intention of causing a scandal and you must make haste. If she doesn't decide, I may just make both of them for her because you can never have enough shirts. But um, while we wait for her decision, let's go ahead and make mine. So this one is rather long. It is already seven and a half inches long. Typically, you want your shirt to be about, or your design for your shirt to be between eight and nine inches wide for a woman's shirt. That is a really good um, width. But then if it is a long design like this one, we're going to go ahead and leave it because we don't want it to get too big. You know, we might up it to, say, six inches. It's eight and a half. We should attach these if we're changing the size so that they both change together. That's not too bad. 5.3, 5 5 I meant to say 5.5. 5. 5 and a half by 8. So let's go ahead and stick there. I'm going to detach them because I am going to be cutting these out of infusible ink and two different colors. So the words are all going to be dark blue and the carriage is going to be a really pretty yellow floral design, which kind of reminds me of uh, the Featherington dresses. <laughs> then I am going to cut the entire B design out of one solid piece of iron on. So we're going to go ahead and just make this entire design eight inches wide, which is about where I'm comfortable with my shirts. There, it's not too big, not too small just right. So now we're going to change these colors so that Design Space knows to cut them out of different um, cutting mats. If we were to send this right now through the through to make, it is going to put them all on the exact same cutting mat, see? And we want to cut them out of different materials. So let's make the carriage yellow. Cutting that out of that yellow floral um, infusible ink. And the words here, let's cut out of blue because that's going to be like a dark navy. Now I am going to go ahead and take a shape. This right now is going to cut out as one piece with a giant piece of uh, infusible ink in the middle, which for infusible ink, that's not really ideal. We don't want to waste that much material. So instead, I'm going to simply slice with a, a long brick here and then delete it, delete the gray. And now this is on its own layer. You can see layer one, layer two. Let's turn our carriage back on. These will still, these two blue will still cut on the same cutting mat, but they won't leave all that space in the middle. Now what that means is when we go to actually put this shirt together, we will have to place these one, two, three individually, as opposed to laying down the backwards and laying the carriage in the middle. Since this carriage is almost five inches across by five inches across, I don't want to waste that much infusible ink. We're going to go ahead and make it work this way. So infusible ink is going to have to go on a cutting mat. Our iron on will be a smart iron. So we're going to do multiple ways and then we will have to pick that individually. Apparently our B is not welded, our B layer. So this one here, let's go ahead and weld it. You'll want to weld any of the pieces, um, any of these designs because otherwise all of these little cursive let layers will go in individually. So once you've uploaded them, make sure you have welded them. Perfect. We don't need to do the other two because slicing effectively made them one layer for us. All right. So this one's fine. We're going to use a smart iron on, I believe. I have to go grab it still. Um, so without mat is fine. If you do want to use a regular iron on, you will select on mat. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to select on mat and on mat. Perfect. So now I can put my infusible ink on these. Now, of course, infusible ink needs to be mirrored and iron on. 
does need to be mirrored. So there we go. All three layers ready to go. We will connect our Maker 3 and we will start cutting. Here is connected. We can go ahead and select our materials. So I did switch this one to on matte. I'm going to be using a regular iron on. This is a sports flex. So let's see, it should be at the bottom here. Yep. Perfect. And I am going to use default pressure. It will remind you here, make sure mirror is turned on and your iron on is face down, shiny side down. We're cutting into the back of our material, not the front. Now for these two, we'll pick infusible ink and it will say the exact same settings. We will click more and we will click go. So that is all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and meet y'all over at the Cricut to load this baby in. Ta-da. All right, y'all, it is quite dreary outside today, so I have all my artificial lights on. I hope it's okay for y'all. Um, but the new shows are out on Thursday, so there is no time to delay. We must make haste, which is exactly what we're doing here. So you can see I have two mats loaded. The first for our B, with our iron on. So this is a premium uh, sports flex iron on and this beautiful aqua kind of shimmer color. It's gonna go on a light sea foamy teal shirt. So I think this will really stand out. I'm going to use my rare, probably need to re-sticky these or get some new cutting mats. I tend to use these fabric ones even if not for fabric, I just like them for everything. I find they're a good middle of the road stickiness. A bit more stick than the original standard set. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cut this one and then I will show you the other one. Okay, go. Ta-da! Well, I think I'm gonna wear this shirt a lot and I'm really excited because these are all really big areas to weed, <laughs> which is silly, but I hate weeding small areas. All right, so now for our infusible ink, I picked this Cricut infusible ink that has these really pretty yellow flowers and navy blue. It just, Yellow is not really my color. I bought this uh, for this dark yellow for a specific project I was working on for my brother. Um, but this, I wanted a floral pattern for the carriage and I had a couple with pinks and blues, but this to me just screamed Featherington. So, you know, it is pretty. I think it'll be really pretty on the design. We're gonna go for it. So I did move in Cricut Design Space, my carriage from this side of the cutting mat to this side, because this side of my cutting mat was stickier. It did not want to stick to this side, which is fine. You just need to make sure in Cricut Design Space, you've told your image where exactly on the cutting mat to cut. And that way you can use one cutting mat for multiple pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and select Infusible Ink from that same drop down menu we picked from earlier. I'm going to select more. And I'm going to click go. The carriage does have a bit of detail, but it's not too fine of detail, so it should still cut pretty easily. Let it cut. Okay. 
I cannot wait to see how this shirt turns out. I love infusible ink because it really bonds to your shirt. Now these are small designs, so it's not as big a deal, but you want to turn everything over and keep your infusible ink straight while you curl the cutting mat back away from your infusible ink. Otherwise you will really curl your infusible ink, which is of course never the goal. Like your hands need to be clean and dry, your surface needs to be clean and dry. Imagine turning this over into a uh, water ring from a coffee cup or a Diet Coke can or, you know, whatever that might be for you. Now let's go ahead and put our... Oh, you guys are on my protective sheets tripod problems. It's okay. You were easy to move. You're very light. All right. Perfect. So now when we are weeding our infusible ink, unlike our iron on, we are not going to use a weeding tool. The material is actually really delicate and we don't want to rip it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an outside corner, and start by removing the excess with our fingers. It is actually a very thick material, so it just comes right off. Right off. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this corner and you'll simply take it off. The inside sections kinda pop out and you just want to make sure, especially with a delicate piece like the carriage, that we're removing the correct sections, leaving behind the image we want and only removing the negative portions and not accidentally taking out, like say the carriage wheel, we're taking out the portions in between the carriage wheel. So for your iron on, we'll use a weeding tool. So this comes, there's lots of different weeding tools. I have this one out at the moment. And you'll simply go in, kind of grab a corner and weed out that section. Since this is sports flex, it has a lot more give than some uh, iron-ons do. But I love the metallic sports flex and I love how it looks on my shirts. So there we go. I will go ahead and weed out all these little parts, the insides of the E and S and H, all the insides of the B's wings, the inside of the O. Thought that might be an easy one. Sports Flex isn't hard, it's just not as easy as some things. Infusible ink is actually one of my favorite things to weed because it just pops out like big stickers. So give me a second and we'll get all of this weeded for you. All right, so you must make haste. Now we always try to put our image design about four fingers down. We want to center it so that O in the middle of the U and the Y. Honestly, I'm going to move it a little further up since this is a v-neck, which puts the chest a smidge yeah, closer. All right, I think that's good. Now, the carrier sheet will hold this pretty close in place, but I always like to take just a bit of washi tape. This baby weeded pretty darn easily, but y'all, I'm so excited for this carriage. Look how pretty that is. So for our infusible ink versus our iron on, we need two different settings. I always start with the lowest setting because it is easier to then up the uh, temperature for our second setting, as opposed to if we started, we need 330 for infusible ink, 305 for iron on. If we start at three, that 330, we will have to wait for this to cool down we will have to wait for it to heat up a smidge more, 
but it does not take nearly as long to heat up as it does to cool down. Put it over, hit that green button. I did use my Easy Press to kind of iron my shirt a smidge before I lined up my decal, making sure that all the wrinkles were out and it was smooth, good to go. But weeding was pretty darn quick and easy this go around. And while I was weeding, my best friend called back and told me she does want the, I have no intention of causing a scandal, but she also wants the bee and she wants pink, <laughs> which is only funny for me because if you know the two of us, I am the pink girl and she is the blue. And so we are going polar opposite. I am adding a bit more blue to my wardrobe and she's been adding more pink to hers this year. Uh, we, we had way too much of our signature color and not enough of the other colors. I go ahead, heat it 30 seconds from the back with iron on. It's always best to firmly push from the front and the back. And I am holding down with my easy press, pushing down on the large handle, but I'm not really firmly giving a lot of pressure. I'm just holding it in place. Perfect. So now I'm going to take this and adjust it up to 330 and 40 seconds. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I'm like, why is it not getting any better? Sometimes my brain just does not click on. All right, so the orange of the Easy Press here means that it is heating up. It's already at 320. And we're going to let this cool for just a minute and then we will do a cool press. Oh, it's already at 330. So let's go ahead and move this aside. Once it's cool, I take the decal off. But in the meantime, we get our second shirt ready. Now this is one of Cricut's shirts that's compatible with their infusible ink. Fusible ink is, of course, not compatible with all shirts. It needs a high count of polyester, I believe. I did an entire comparison on, you know, Cricut shirts versus other name brands and how infusible ink worked on all of those different shirts and which ones were visible. You can also buy shirts that are meant for sublimation because, of course, infusible ink is a type of sublimation. It's just a kind of ready to go type. Colin's carriage rides. This is gonna be so cute. So I'm gonna put this at the top. Then our carriage. So this is why everything had to be mirrored because we're putting it face down on our shirt. Now we are gonna have to cut away part of this transfer tape. With infusible ink, you want to heat it as few times as possible. So we want all of our infusible ink to touch as much of the shirt as possible. If it is that carriage is on top of this transfer sheet, it will not fix itself to it. Let's go ahead, cut the bottom this carriage off as well. I swear I've used scissors before. Maybe just not in this lifetime. Okay, take two. Collins carriage rides. I know a lot of girls who would take that, that carriage ride with Mr. Bridgerton himself. We're going to use the lines of the infusible ink here, the guidelines to help us keep everything straight. There we go. 
I think that's good. Now we are gonna use some washi tape, infusible ink, unlike iron on, needs to be completely motionless while you are heating it up. So you're going to put your infuse, your easy press over top of it, you're going to push down firmly, much firmer than the iron on. And we're not going to move it. So I think in this case, we're gonna to have to do the top and then the bottom, because if I had my big easy press out, we could do the whole amount. This we're gonna to have to do twice. So that's okay. I think we're actually gonna to try to do the carriage down and then the Collins carriage rides and up. So put it over that carriage, set it in place, push down firmly, hit the green. going to be very still. We're not going to shift. We're going to push straight down. If you start shifting and moving during this process, the ink will get hazy and it will not be as crisp and clear because the actual ink is setting into the actual shirt. Now we're going to pick this straight up. Don't slide it. There we go, and you can see the um, layers starting to lift off. That is a good sign. That means they have bonded properly. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually slide this a little carefully, carefully up and get the carriage ride. Now, because we had to do this in two parts, I wasn't sure if the Easy Press was covering the entire piece the entire time. We're going to very carefully peel back that infusible ink backing. Make sure all the ink is fixed. If it's not, I can use my tiny Easy Press to heat anything that was missed by the big plate here. But I think we did a pretty good job of getting the layers down individually. All right, it's very hot, but I'm gonna pick it up. There we go. So like I said, if it is bonded, it is going to very easily come up. It will already be coming up when you are pulling it up. If it is not, if it's stuck in any way, that's when you'll want to be careful. Oh, look at that carriage. Yeah, that's nice. That is not a Featherington carriage. I don't know what is. All right, so it's the bottom of this carriage ride part of the letters that I was worried about, and it looks perfect. It looks perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead, check this one. You know what, before I do that, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I find with iron on, it helps to kind of Bond everything with your brayer. I don't know why. I'm just gonna go slow. Something funny is going on there. It looks like the carrier sheet is stuck to the iron on. I don't know why. It's just on the top layer. Okay. 
Oh, I'm going to wear the heck out of this shirt. I really hope that top portion's not messed up. Okay. So I'm going to bring you in even closer. So right here, I don't know if you can see, but right here there was a part where the carrier sheet was stuck to this wing when I was pulling it from this way. Can you see that? So by pulling it from the bottom instead of the side, I was able to get under it and the actual iron-on looks fine. Don't know why it bonded like that, but this is why we go slow. And if it's not working from one direction, try the other direction before giving up. So we're just gonna keep going slow, slow and steady. So I really wanna wear this shirt. can literally hear Eloise's voice saying this. <laughs> um, there we go. There we go. Did you see the difference? Like, I was literally bringing the carrier sheet with it. And coming from the other side made it work. I have not had that happen before, but, you know, it doesn't surprise me. I love this. Okay, give me a minute. I'm actually going to go do my bestie shirt, and then I will be back to show you all three together. All right, y'all. I am done, and I am so in love. This video will be coming out on Wednesday, which means tomorrow. Tomorrow is Bridgerton Day. So if you are brave enough to stay up till midnight tonight, you'll be able to watch it literally tonight. I am not capable of doing that today because I have a doctor's appointment in the morning. I'm actually quite disappointed about it. I want to watch Bridgerton. But I figure I can wear my new shirt to the doctor. So I'm still repping Penelope and her boy, Colin. And then I will come home and put on my comfy ho hoodie and cuddle up and watch the rest of season three. I am so excited. If you are excited, leave me a comment down below. We will be finishing off Bridgerton week. We had our first Bridger 10 tablescape, our second feathering 10 tablescape, our three cricket shirts. I have a bracelet, a charm bracelet design for y'all that will be coming up either tomorrow or the next day. Depends on uh, when that uploads, but look out for it because it's going to be really cute. <laughs> it has the sweetest little bees on it. I'm so excited. Either way, I hope you loved these designs and whether you're watching for season three or in the future, I did make quite a few designs like the you must make haste that are applicable for all the seasons. Um, happy Bridgerton. Bye y'all.